Hello, my name is David Atkinson. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an erstwhile practitioner, a consultant, a trainer, and a lecturer to MBA students in the field of procurement. Now, one caveat on that, um, for about the last 15 years, I've also been training what amounts to now to thousands of salespeople and how to profile their key customer relationships and improve their engagement with them. But anyway, more details of my background can be found in my LinkedIn profile and there's a good chance that you'll be finding this video on LinkedIn, um, although it's on a YouTube channel. So just to be clear, I have two YouTube channels. One is David Atkinson Business Matters, which is where the, this and other videos like it reside. Uh, and that's focusing on uh, negotiation, strategy, and supplier relationship management in the main, but also some wider issues around sourcing. But that's where you'll find the business stuff. But I also have a more of a personal uh, YouTube channel, which is called David Atkinson Life Matters, which uh, is where I kind of uh, share um, insights into kind of my more personal living. Uh, I talk about records, uh, music, I talk about travel, I talk about cycling and hiking, and it's a repository for kind of what I'm doing now that I'm into semi-retirement. Now, this is what retirement or semi-retirement looks like. Uh, behind me, you can see a wall of vinyl records. Uh, not, a long, not, not too long ago, that was uh, full of business books and files, um, but I've gradually been uh, getting rid of those and putting those in the, in, in the deepest part of my archive, and I'll, I'll pull them out from time to time. But anyway, um, that's kind of who I am and, and what I'm doing. Let me tell you why I'm here today. Um, I don't know about you, but I, even though I'm kind of in semi-retirement, I, I do spend some time most days looking at LinkedIn and keeping abreast of what's going on, uh, what people are saying, what people are sharing, um, things that are happening in the procurement field and the sales field, but mainly the procurement field and how it's impacting how people go about their jobs. And I'm routinely frustrated by what I'm saying. Now, there was a time when procurement uh, practitioners and thought leaders, they would use LinkedIn to share lots of content and people would be writing blogs and maybe more latterly they'd be making videos and, and so on. But there's not so much of that now. There's, uh, there's it seems to be mostly about promotion um, and there are kind of zeitgeist issues like um, ESG, uh, environment, social and governance and DEI, diversity, equity um, and inclusion. Although sometimes people uh, describe DEI as diversity, equality and inclusion. And, uh, and it, it kind of still amazes me is that people don't know the difference between equality and equity. Uh, and some pretty seasoned practitioners out there still get confused and uh, and you know when when you when you kind of understand the distinction it, it's a little bit preposterous on occasion but anyway i am saying uh, in addition to what i've just described um, graphics like this that keep appearing and this is the procurement iceberg um, and what we have here is that basically it's an argument that above the line, above the surface, uh, stakeholders and other people, and even practitioners themselves, to some degree, um, see the procurement job as sourcing and negotiation. But below the surface, where the, the larger section of the iceberg is, you've got a whole load of things uh, that are occupying procurement's time. And here you've got financial updates, administration, logistics, contract disputes, risk management, inventory control, supply relationship management, contract management, uh, negotiation preparation, supplier selection, and a whole host of others. And that's what is described here as what people don't see. So, you know, it's, it's the usual cry from functional experts saying that um, people don't understand what we do and how we do it and why it's important. Uh, war is me. Um, but there is a certain logic and there's a certain legitimacy here is that the procurement task is not really that well understood by people. 
How, however, however, alongside that procurement iceberg, I'm also occasionally seeing what are presented as uh, processes, and I'm loath to use the word sequential, but processes that describe the procurement task from beginning to end. And, and I, I say I'm loath to say sequential because none of these are sequential. And I'm going to go into that in this video and the videos that follow. So I've kind of felt the urge um, to try and share some knowledge and some experience uh, around uh, three main areas. And this is the beginning of what might become a substantial video series uh, around uh, procurement strategy or procurement transformation. How would one go about, if you were a leader, transforming the procurement operation for which you're responsible? Um, I'll talk about um, at length about supply relationship management, uh, which is the, the post-contract phase of category management. And I'll talk about negotiation and uh, what I've learned about negotiation over the, over the time. And, and what I'm going to use uh, to help me through these videos is I'm going to kind of refer initially to the lecture notes that, and, and materials that I prepared for um, the MBA students that I've worked with over a number of years. Now, these videos, uh, this is a bit of an introductory video, so it's a little bit longer than usual, but these videos are generally going to be short. So I'm kind of intending to uh, limit the videos to, you know, five, ten minutes uh, maximum, uh, and but they'll all be hosted on the uh, David Atkinson Business Matters YouTube channel. So as they build up, um, there'll be uh, a sequential um, uh, playlist of, of, of videos. So if anybody's interested in kind of going back to the beginning and then following it through uh, right the way through to the end, then that's where they'll, they'll find it. Otherwise, you might trip over this video on, on LinkedIn. Um, one final thing before I get into um, material, initial material, is that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have lots of fancy graphics or high production values. Um, I just haven't got the time for that or the inclination to do that. I think it's more important that I kind of just share uh, knowledge um, kind of in a relatively relaxed way. A um, bit of a, you know, I, I'd call it maybe a fireside chat, but it's obviously not a fireside. It's a, it's, it's a record archive, um, but it, it's kind of relatively informal. Now, if anybody wants to ask any questions, um, you know, there's comments on link comment section on LinkedIn, but there's also the comment section on YouTube as well. So feel free. But anyway, this first series, and I'm going to continue this as long as I'm interested in doing it, and depending on what people uh, people feedback, I'm going to uh, spend the first the first series around what do you do if you're a procurement leader in developing your procurement strategy. And what uh, you know, and whether that represents a, a transformation, or whether that is a kind of a revisiting of what we already do, and see if we can make our activities that little bit tighter. Uh, that's for you, you to judge. Um, so let me start uh, with a little bit on the territory, and I'm going to be referring throughout this uh, this series to influential writers and pioneers, real thought leaders. And uh, just to, to suffice to say that, you know, continuous improvement, and, and and I'm going to use notes from time to time to help me along, but generally speaking, I won't be using too many, but I'm going to start here. Uh, continuous improvement and the competitive challenge has been around since the Industrial Revolution, and probably before. But once capacity exceeds demand, capacity exceeds demand in a given business sector, then a competitive battle ensues and businesses have to improve. And the methods of improvement have been influenced over the decades by some of the names that are mentioned here. Together, they spawned a host of fads and initiatives that have spread through our organizations. Sadly, these initiatives typically fail to become successfully embedded and soon afterwards, the same tools reemerge in a new guise, sometimes with only a name change. However, nevertheless, if we go back to the source materials, some of these are astonishingly good theories, ideas, and concepts that have as much validity today as they have ever done. So some of these people I'm going to be referring back to 
uh, were writing and uh, doing their thought leadership pieces and consulting work, advisory work, many, many years ago. Uh, so, for example, the Toyota production system has been the envy of copyists since it was developed in the 60s by Ono and on the back of support from uh, W. Edwards Deming. Together, the practices they promoted and the concept of systems thinking, this this powerful concept has re-emerged in the last 20 years and has been picked up by Peter Seng, uh, Peter Schultes and practices in the public sector in the UK by Dr. John Seddon. Um, so in addition to systems thinking, the other great theory uh, of influence since the early 1990s uh, has been the balanced scorecard. Now we've all heard about that and I you know, I just literally this week, I just got involved in a, a discussion on LinkedIn about how many key performance indicators uh, procurement should be addressing. Uh, and they went into the 20 odds. Uh, so it was a huge number. Uh, the balanced scorecard uh, label wasn't used, but essentially that's thinking about the balanced scorecard would distill those 20 odd different KPIs into a more manageable number. Um, but anyway, the balanced scorecard and then what followed, which is called strategy mapping, both were codified by Kaplan and Norton and have gained widespread use, but not as wide as maybe we might have hoped. So what I'm going to do is kind of draw on systems thinking and strategy mapping, and I'm going to try and consider how organizations can go about developing procurement strategies that work on a sustainable basis There's a, so that they really, really work. They really, really become embedded. Um, so the agenda for this series um, will cover, amongst other things, uh, it'll consider the challenges faced by chief procurement officers and procurement in general. Um, I'm going to discuss the range of performance measures available to procurement and the focus is on the, the function and not the performance indicators of supplier performance, but the performance measures placed upon the procurement function itself. And then I'm going to present uh, a model uh, for transforming procurement that include that involves includes the systems thinking uh, define what transformation uh, is uh, we'll talk through some of the change management challenges that the procurement leaders uh, typically face and uh, we'll introduce you to strategy mapping and the balanced scorecard now as I, as I say the first, this is the first in a series of videos, and even though this one has been longer than the others, I am uh, going to try and limit it um, to uh, a much shorter time frame, so it's more e easily digestible. Just to tell you that the next video is going to be focusing on how do you create a performance uh, management system and a in continuous improvement culture in the procurement organization, in a procurement organization. So I'll see you on the next video and thanks for watching this one. Cheers for now.